Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about how to use this uh, logical statement and how to derive some reasoning out of it, like using this pattern, how you're going to follow a former rule and how you're going to derive a reasoning out of it. So uh, I'll just tell you like uh, with this representation, what we have taken in the agent uh, in this Uber's world problem, uh, we know that like an uh, agent need to enter into the K and he's going to take the path with P11. And uh, we have already discussed about uh, the way of representation and how we are going to derive our rules out of it. So I'll give you some examples and uh, I'll show you some of the rules for uh, which we are going to use for this uh, reasoning in proportional logic uh, patterns. Okay. So now in you know, first world problem, when an agent, like we need to find a safer zone, right? An agent need to enter into a cave. The cave consists of adjacent uh, boxes like rooms and each room you have something inside. Okay, sometimes like you have a gold, the ultimate goal is the agent has to enter into the room, get the gold and he have to exit out of the place where he have entered. One comma one, he needs to come out of it. And uh, some death notes are there. One is like there might be a possibility of an oofus or some of the places like some of the rooms you have a pit into it. So when an agent enter into a place where you have this uh, oofus or pit, it is your death note. Like the agent is going to, the program is going to end. Okay, there is no more possible move. So that is the death move. So the uh, so we have to take a precaution such that like we have to enter in such, like we should avoid entering into uh, such a box or, or such a rooms. Okay, so and whatever knowledge we have regarding that is like the rooms that is near to the pit will have a breezy effect and the uh, rooms that is near to the oofus will have a stingy smell. And those places or the rooms that have a gold will have a glittering effect. So these things we are going to take it as a uh, sensors. Okay, we are going to sense the environment and based on the sensing of environment uh, conditions, whatever is available right now, based on that percept, we are going to take some actions out of it. Okay, so that is your usual uh, agent-based problems and all. So now the agent is going to enter into the cave in one comma one. And with that known fact that one comma one is totally free, right? You don't have anything into it. So there is no breezy effect or uh, there is no stingy smell and there is no pit or boomfus. You have a lot of representation. You can use this representation for it. Okay. So with all this, we can proceed to the next step. Since the death note is like uh, there is no breeze. So there is no, uh, no uh, pit in the nearby rooms and there is no stingy smell. So you don't have any... Uh, or say you don't have any pit in the, uh, sorry, oomphus in the nearby room. So this can be represented like a rule. See, there is no breeze in one comma one implies there is no oomph, uh, pit in the nearby room. So what is the nearby room for, for one comma one? One is one comma two and two comma one. So you can write it as there is no pit in one comma two and there is no pit in Two comma one. We are going to use an and relationship. The reason is there is no breeze. So surely both the adjacent rooms are not going to have a pit into it. Okay. And there is no stingy smell in uh, one comma one. This implies there is no oomphus in the nearby room. One comma two and sorry, there is no oomphus. We can use this representation W for representing oomphus in two comma one. Okay, so this is how you're going to write the rules in the knowledge base. So when an agent enter into a room, he will sense the current scenario, current environment, whatever is the current perspective of the environment that will be added as a rules in the knowledge base. So each time when an agent tends to explore a room, he tends to derive some new rules out of it. Okay, so with this, we can say that there is no breezy effect or a stingy smell in room one comma one. So it is safe to enter into the room one comma two and two comma one. The reason is there is no pit and there is no oomphus going to present in this place. Okay, to correlate these two rules, see this, there is no breeze in one comma one is proven. And this is a rule that if there is no breeze in one comma one, then you don't have any pit in one comma two and two comma one. So this can be combined together and with that we can derive like these two rules can be combined together and we can derive it, uh, derive a new rule out of it like combining these two. We can write it as there is no pit in one comma two and there is no pit in two comma one. So this kind of rule com combination, right? This is called as modus podens rule. I'll tell you three rules, three basic rules that you usually follow here. One is... Modus 
response. So it says that P implies Q given P these two are true. It says that Q is true. I usually convey this with an example like we can have this as an if then else statement. Implies actually says that it is an if then else statement. If it is raining, then street get wet. Whenever it is raining, street get wet. So this is a proven one. So that is how your implies is known. And it is also known that like this is your P statement and this is your Q statement. Whenever it rains, the street will get wet. So this is a proven condition. It is going to be true for all when it is given as an implies condition. And given that it is raining now. So with that, we can come to a justification that the street will get wet. So that you can relate it for a uh, modus ponens rule. Like another one is like this thing rule uh, with a um, slight modification, you can call it as modus tollens rule. Modus tollens is P implies Q, negation P, uh, Q is given. So whenever it is raining, the street get wet and it is given that the street is not wet. So it means that this there is no rain in the place. Okay, so this is two main rules that you're going to use and one more uh, important rule is and elimination. See, whenever you say that these two statements are true and when you combine using that and connection. See here, in the given example, it is known that, like using your modus ponens rule, we can write it that they, there is no pit in P, 1 comma 2, and there is no pit in 2 comma 1. With that, we can say that, like you can write it as no pit in 1 comma 2. That is also true. No pit in 2 comma 1, that is also true. So we can directly derive the rules as there is no pit in 1 comma 1, and there is no pit in 2 comma 1. So these two are proven 1. Okay, so this is called and elimination. And elimination is something like when you have two rules combining using and condition, it means that you can write a comma a and b if it is taken to be true, it is a is true and b is true. You can write it as anything. This is your and elimination rule. Okay, so using these rules, we are trying to find a, a pattern out of it. We are going to try to find a reasoning out of it. Like in this example, if I am trying to find a safer move, next possible safer move. So after explore, exploring this one comma one, you have two adjacent rooms. The agent can enter into either one comma two or two comma one. And with the current scenarios, we can say that both the rooms are safe to enter. And now when the agent want to explore this room, okay, when the agent is exploring this room of Two comma one, there is a breezy effect in this room. Two comma one, okay. So it is known that there is a breeze in two comma one, and when there is a breeze in two comma one, this actually implies somewhere around this room you have a pit. It is not sure that which adjacent room you have a pit. Okay, the rooms that is nearby pit will have a breezy effect, and when a breeze is detected, it means that somewhere around the room we have a breezy effect. It might be either one comma one, two comma two, or three comma one. So you don't have any proper derivation of which room it is there. So this place we can use an and connection. So you may have a possibility or connection, possibility of pit in one comma one, or there might be a possibility of pit in two comma two, or there might be a possibility of pit in three comma one. Okay. So using your modus ponens rule, you can write it as there is a pit in either p one comma one or p two comma two or pit in three comma one. Okay. So this. You can write it using your modus ponens rule, but with this, we cannot have a proper justification of which room to enter next. Okay, so agent cannot take a, a risk on entering into a room that consists of pit. So either, either 2 comma 2 or 3 comma 1 will have a pit since it is already given that there is no pit in 1 comma 1. Okay, so you have another two possibilities. We cannot take a risk in this. So we can what we can do now, the agent can take the next possible room over here. Okay, so we have already decided that 2 comma 1 is safe and we have entered into the room. Now, the next possible safer room is 1 comma 2. So the agent, when he is entering into this 1 comma 2, I'll take another color. I, I don't have space here. I'll write it here. Uh, when an agent explores this 1 comma 2, it has a stingy smell. But since we are just focusing on the rooms that consist of pit alone, there is no breeze in this place. Okay, so there is no breeze in this 1 comma 2. So no breeze in 1 comma 2, what does it denotes? It denotes that there is no pit in the nearby room. So what are the rooms that are near to this room? 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2 and 1 comma 3. So we can write the rules as there is no pit in 1 comma 1 and there is no pit in 2 comma 2 and there is no pit in 1 comma 3. 
Okay, using modus ponens rule, we can write it as there is no pit in one comma one, there is no pit in and, there is no pit in two comma two, and there is no pit in one comma three. So all these things are derived. Now what you're going to do next? Now combining these rules, we can say that you have p one comma one. A pit will be either in one comma one, but pit in one comma one is not there. Okay, by combining that, there is no pit in one comma one. We can write that you have a possibility of pit in either two comma two or p three comma one. Okay, I hope you understand this. Since there will be a possibility of pit in either one comma one, two comma two, or three comma one, and we already know that there is no pit in one comma one. So with that, we can derive either the pit will be in two comma two or three comma one. And using this rule, when you use an and elimination place, there is no pit in two comma two is also given. There is no pit in two comma two. By combining these two, we can write it as there is a pit in three comma one. And you don't have any other possible rules that actually defines whether the uh, pit is there or not. So with that, we can prove that there is a pit in three comma one. Okay, so this is how we combine the rules that derives. Uh, derived in a particular place, we put that into a knowledge base and we club two or three rules together to find a derivation out of it. Okay, so this is how a reasoning pattern occur. And when you want to find a resolution for any of the rules, like when you want to justify that there is a pit in three comma one, okay, if it is given that when a goal is given that we have to find the pit in three comma one, what we usually do, we take the negation of it and add it to the existing database. Okay, so we take this as a resolution, like negation of P1, comma 3 is taken here. Since my goal is to find there is a pit in 3, comma 1. So what we usually do, we take that, the reverse of it, negation of P3, comma 1. And uh, we convert all the rules into an conjective normal form. Like all these rules that we have added, right, these are all and connected. So it is true that there is no breeze in one comma one. It is true that there is no stingy smell in one comma one. So whenever an agent is exploring the rule, uh, exploring each and every rule, all the rules that are generated are true. Okay, so that actually means everything is true. It is all connected using a conjunction. It is in conjunctive normal form we have to use. Okay, and uh, we add this negation of the rule, convert all the rules into conjunctive normal form. And we try to draw this resolution graph, like we combine all those things and uh, apply the rule. Finally, you'll have a place where you nullify everything. There will not be any possible move out of it. So with that, we can say it is like proof by contradiction method. So in the next session, I'm going to explain about what is resolution, how to convert any uh, given statements into a conjective normal form and how to derive a rule accordingly. Okay. Thank you.